And now we come to the summary and conclusions arising from this epic journey of discovery. Now the what neurogenic bladder could be the basis for high mortality seen in the 1930s with the so-called highly virulent Teshin strain and uh, in Haiti in uh, 2012. Uh, the reason for this is that the neurogenic bladder is actually a result of domination of the sympathetic nervous system over the parasympathetic nervous system in, and the uh, closure of the sphincter of the neck with continued uh, urination, the bladder gets bigger and bigger and so the sympathetic nervous system comes into play and causes increase in blood pressure and cardiac rate, which can be fatal. Obviously, in a natural outbreak in pigs, that would not be attended to by any of the doctors. In the case of, of humans, in the hospitals, they would catheterise the bladder. This occurs in conditions like um, traumatic injury, in accidents, and um, the localization of the lesion is from T6 upwards. And so when you get these lesions from, say, spinal cord trauma or even poliomyelitis, infections at T6 upwards, you get dilation of the bladder. And this can then lead to fatal cardiac failure. So we have this rather interesting situation where the, where the pigs, instead of dying from neurogenic failure, they, uh, from, in the brain and spinal cord, they died from cardiac failure. The second original finding, the unique original isolation of porcine tissue virus one in Australia from a point source epidemic. It was unique because we isolated it in 1970 and twice over the next six months. And it's never been isolated since, 44 years later. And so the reasons for that could be because of the fact that the pigs were running on a deep litter system, whereas that is not the sort of system that occurs these days. Uh, they run on boards or on concrete and the uh, faeces uh, is not present in large amounts like it is in a deep litter system. So it's a matter of dosage as well. And it's interesting that in Europe, uh, when you visit a farm, quite often the, uh, the deep litter system is present next door to the bedroom and the lounge room. And so they have had uh, deep litter systems in the past and uh, maybe they're still there now. So it's a matter of dose rate and the um, presence of uh, faecal con uh, faeces contaminated with the virus. From this isolation arose a dilemma. And that dilemma is like an oxymoron. How you can have something that's exotic and endemic at the same time? Uh, exotic means it's outside Australia, endemic means it's present throughout Australia. And that's why the Teschentalfen is the cause of a dilemma and a situation which does not really exist. And I proved that by using immunosuppressives. Using the mild form, I created the massive, highly virulent form, so-called Teshin. So this is evidence that the, uh, the so-called T6 
two strain virulence in virulence does not exist. And that's also supported by molecular biology in which there's no evidence at all that there's any molecular biology uh, variation between, between them. There's, it's a common serotype. We now turn to the next original discovery and that's the what cell nodule or glial nodule. For 80 years or more, the glial nodule or cell nodule has been recorded. It's involved in a great range of viruses attacking the nervous system. Previous authors have recorded it, but never explained why it's there. The Watts cell nodule explains why it is there. It is there because of a primary initial attack of the virus on the local blood capillary endothelial cells. There is a reaction of the tissue to the presence of that necrosis. The cells present are a mixture of glial cells but, and of hematogenous cells, lymphocytes. So it's not really a glial nodule as such. It's a primary oncotic necrosis, focal necrosis of the blood capillary cells. That is the initiating lesion in the neuropathogenesis of porcine teshovirus disease and also of a number of other viruses affecting man and animals, which I'll deal with later uh, for example, human polio is currently considered to be uh, attacked in, in human polio. The virus is considered to attack the neuron directly. This contrasts with evidence produced in the 1960s by Blissinger that the virus is present in the same places as I found with uh, my... Um, piece of research. So uh, the same pathogenesis is likely to exist. And that is when these blood capillary cells are destroyed, there is dysfunctional transport of nutrients. The normal food, gas and water that goes to the dependent cells is rendered dysfunctional. And that's reflected in the appearance of the pathology on light microscope studies and on electron microscope studies. When the cell nodule uh, was examined under histopathology, uh, one, one actually used sagittal sections which revealed the lumens of the blood capillary cells. Now, when I did that doctoral study, I wrote that this was an increase in numbers, numbers of capillaries. On reflection, and recently, from the work of McGovern and Robbins in the basic textbooks of pathology, I've extrapolated from wound healing, in which they say, they state, uh, wound, the wound produces hypoxia, and those blood capillaries are reacting to hypoxia. So this reinforces what I, my research in that um, the hypoxia is, is produced by destruction of those local blood capillary endothelial cells in the brain, the spinal cord, and the dorsal root ganglia and the trigeminal ganglion. And so uh, the neuron, the neuron which one could call, I've called it the what neuron, 
because I want to draw attention to the fact that it's not attacked directly by a virus, that it's a uh, secondary effect caused by primary destruction of the parent cells with secondary effects upon not only the neurons but the other uh, cells in the, um, in the nervous tissue. So with the, this neuron which, un, which one sees under light, an electron microscope, one can then read the slide now, which one couldn't do before. And that is the presence of free ribosomes, which are being lost from the, the normal place in initial substance. All these molecules are they're held together by energy forces. And if the energy is depleted, as it is with this lack of uh, of nutrients, then this results in the loosening and, and freedom of the ribosomes. So one sees diffuse ribosomes and that is explained by lack of energy. One also sees in the neuron, with the what neuron, vacuoles of various types. The explanation for this is the dysfunctional transport system, particularly in the Golgi apparatus. And so one sees marked enlargement of the smooth endoplasmic reticulum and a whole range of other vacuoles. And this is principally water. It's either water or gas. And um, it's most probably water and therefore that condition is called cytotoxic edema because it's within the cell. Um, that contrasts with the, with the blood capillary cell which shows oncotic necrosis. It's also, the, that blood capillary is also filled with water. Um, and it's, there, in that blood capillary there is a complete lysis. One usually does not see complete lysis of a neuron. It's a gradual process and it's a varied process, which indicates lack of oxygen and other nutrients. In contrast to a blood capillary cell, which is invaded by the virus, destroyed, where the, the virus multiplies and destroys the whole contents of the cytoplasm, and, and this disrupts the sodium-potassium pump. Larger, larger amounts of sodium ions are present in, inside, and so water comes in and the cell swells, called oncocytic. A critical lesion inside the cell is the effects on the mitochondria the degeneration of mitochondria at, in various, at various levels of severity. The mitochondria may show hypertrophy, hyperplasia and also dis destruction, degeneration of the Christi associated with the generation of free radicals by an aberrant cytochrome system. And so, with depleted, degenerated mitochondria uh, under anaerobic conditions, there is marked depletion of energy which affects all the dependent cells. The next discovery was the microinfarct. This was associated with coagulation necrosis and coagulation necrosis is caused by hypoxia, which once again reinforces the evidence of uh, blood capillary destruction of the uh, parents' cells. The next um, contribution to science is the what brain topographic mapping, in which 
uh, by uh, this in which the there is a qualitative and quantitative mapping of the whole brain using whole brain trans transverse or coronal sections. Uh, this shows the distribution of the lesions throughout the whole brain and also it, it shows whether the lesions in, are bilateral or not. And if they are bilateral, this indicates that the origin of the virus is from the bloodstream as we did discover. Now the next or evolvement was the so-called Watt theory of uh, microcirculation pathology. Here it was demonstrated and also theorised that the virus is attached to the blood capillary cells because of a slowing down in the blood flow in the microcirculation at those particular areas which are, have high energy needs in order to sustain life, basics of life. And so these lesions were found in those areas in the cranial nuclei, the spinal cord uh, ganglia, the, um, and in the dorsal root ganglia. They're very large neurons and they need a lot of energy. And so it has been demonstrated that there's a higher complexity of blood capillaries in those areas. If you increase the blood capillary complexity, you increase their surface area. Therefore, you increase the, fiction, the frictional forces. And so, this combined with the morphology of both the blood capillary endothelial cell that we saw ultrastructurally, and the leukocytes, and even the thrombocytes that we saw ultrastructurally, combined to, to slow down the blood supply. By, on, by this I mean, on the morphology of the leukocytes was that they sent out so-called pseudovilli or pseudopodia, and those, those villi act, obviously increased the uh, surface area. And the same occurred in the blood capillary endothelial cells. And so the combination of, of the complexity of the blood, blood capillary cells and those changed, those villi forms in both the blood capillary cells and in the, um, and in the leukocytes and even the thrombocytes had a slowing effect and therefore by random chance the virus particles got off their ride on the, on the uh, leukocytes and became attached to the blood capillary cells, subsequently invading them by a system of cavioli and then destroying the cell. We now come to what happened to Harold. You will recall that Harold was seen with severe posterior paresis and Harold at 23 days after the first sighting was improving on day 44, Harold was completely recovered. This has great implications for human patients to try to explain what was going on at the, at the cellular and subcellular level. There is, the first thing is to look at the lesions that were present and um, it, it hasn't been acknowledged or recognised in the past about the uh, severity of the lesions in the white matter. And so the lesions in the white matter obviously produce demyelination, which slow up the nerve impulses. The body, it has been shown that the body has the potential to remyelinate through the oligodendroglial cells, and so remyelination can occur over time. The, the other thing is the, uh, is the withdrawal of possible uh, of water fr from within the cell, fr 
from an endedema, so to, so to toxic edema, in milder forms, there will be regression of, of that water. The other very important thing is the possibility of hypertrophy and hyperplasia of the mitochondria, restoring the energy, because the, mi the mitochondria have their own DNA and by epigenetic methods can actually um, reproduce. And so the mitochondria could be restored, the water restored, the myelin restored, and the finally is the lesion that we saw on histopathology in natural cases of neovascularization with uh, caused by uh, hypoxia just in wound healing, same as in wound healing. And so one can see uh, these new endothelial cells, which are larger than normal because they haven't got the blood in them at the moment. When they get the blood in them, the pressure of the blood will flatten those endo capillary endothelial cells. And uh, with the regeneration of those blood capillary cells goes the restoration of blood supply. And so all these things that I've just talked about to you, restoration of blood supply, uh, deep remyelination, uh, withdrawal of, of water, and restoration of the mitochondria can explain how Harold recovered.